At this time, it is my privilege to present to you our commencement speaker. Our commencement speaker today is Mr. James H. Dickerson. Mr. Dickerson has sat on this stage for the last six years as a regent. His term expired as a regent on January 31, 2013. Today, he honors us by returning as our commencement speaker. Now, Mr. Dickerson himself is a graduate of SFA, as well as his mother. He graduated from SFA in 1968 with a major in chemistry and a minor in biology. And in that same year, 1968, he went to work for Dow Chemical as a research chemist. And he served in that position for some 11 years to 1979. Now, during that period of time, he worked Dow Chemical in the daytime. But at night, he went to South Texas College of Law, where he earned his doctorate of jurisprudence degree. Following earning that degree, he then passed the bar and obtained his license to practice before the United States Patent Office. And then he transferred over to Dow's Chemical Intellectual Division. And there he served in Freeport, Texas. He served in Midland, Michigan. He served in Walnut Creek, California, and he served in Zurich, Switzerland. Throughout his career, he managed many legal professions in the United States, in Switzerland, in the Netherlands, and in Japan, and in Germany. And then in 2004, he retired as a renowned patent attorney. And he and his wife, Linda, moved to New Bronzeville to be close to their granddaughters. Now, Mr. Dickerson retired from Dow Chemical as a patent attorney, but he did not retire. He has been extremely busy since then doing volunteer work and serving on various boards. In New Bronzeville, he has served on the Public Libraries Foundation. He has served on the New Bronzeville Ethics Commission. He has served on their county's Habitat for Humanity Board of Directors, and he has served as a tutor at his granddaughter's elementary school. In 2004, Governor Rick Perry named him the regent at Stephen F. Austin State University. And he has been extremely engaged with our university since his appointment. For four years, he served on the Academic and Student Affairs Committee. Two years, he served as chair of that committee. Another year, he served on the Building and Grounds Committee. And for the last two years, he has served as an officer of the board, serving as the secretary to our Board of Regents. Now, his term expired, as I said, on January the 13th, 2013. But Governor Perry did not wait for his term to expire to go ahead and name him to another state board. Before 2012 was over, Governor Perry named him to the Texas Medical Board Review Committee, District 4. So for a number of months, he held positions on both state boards. So now he will be serving on that Texas Medical Board Review Committee, District 4, until January the 15th, 2016. There's no doubt in my mind, knowing the kind of individual he is, that the governor of Texas will appoint him to another state committee when his term expires. Now, regardless of how successful he has been as a patent attorney, or how busy he has been doing volunteer work or say, serving on boards, he is first and foremost a family man and his family is with him today. And I think it's appropriate that we recognize them. And I'm going to call their names and ask them to stand and remain standing and then ask you to help acknowledge them at one time. First, his wife, Linda, his son, Paul, his son, Cliff, his daughter-in-law, Aline, his granddaughter, Laurel, and his granddaughter, Avery. And I would say to the Dickerson family that many of us here have had the privilege to know and work with for six years your husband, your father, your father-in-law, and your grandfather. And today we would like to thank you for coming to SFA with him today. Thank you. And now it is my privilege to present to you our former regent, our alum, and our commencement speaker, Mr. James H. Dickerson.
Thank you, Dr. Patillo. Appreciate it. Class of 2013, your years of elementary school, middle school, high school, and your thousands of hours of work and study at Stephen F. Austin State University are paying off today. Congratulations. Let's give yourselves a round of applause. As Dr. Patillo said, only about one in four Texans have a college diploma. And today, you are joining that special, hardworking group of folks. Again, congratulations. Dr. Patillo just introduced uh, my, my family, especially uh, Laurel and Avery. During my time on the Board of Regents, Laurel and Avery have come to Stephen F. Austin numerous times, and I've spent many hours with them. And I've taken that as an opportunity to instill upon them the importance of education and also to teach them a few life lessons. I feel like it's my responsibility to teach them what I've learned so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. And it's that same feeling I have for each of you and for all us SFA graduates. I want you to be very successful in your business life and I want you to be very successful in your personal lives. Under the fine guidance of your professors, they've armed you with the knowledge and skills you need to go out and meet the world. Today, I would like to give you three observations that I've picked up through life, or three, as I call it, grandfatherly advice observations. I think these will enrich your lives and will help ensure that you have the success that you so richly deserve. So let's get to it. My first piece of advice, do some self-reflection and figure out what you're good at. Then become great at it. In other words, don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Let me give you an example. In a class this size, I feel confident that at least one of you will make a, an invention that you may want to patent and protect your invention. So you ask around for the best patent attorney that you can find. When you identify one, somebody comes up to you and says, well, she may be a great patent attorney, but she is lousy at writing a will. Does it matter to you? Do you care? No. You want somebody that identified their strength and became great at it. You want that great patent attorney. So my first piece of advice is find your strengths and become great at them. Never let your weaknesses, and we all have weaknesses, never let your weaknesses slow you down. My second piece of advice, pay very close attention to the little decisions in your life. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's these little decisions, or they're the ones that need very careful attention. We all give great consideration to the big events, uh, our, our careers, our finances, marriage, but we spend little or no time on so many of the little decisions and interactions. Again, let me give you an example. When we are under great stress, how do we treat our families? How do we treat our coworkers? It's all of those hundreds of interactions and thoughtless words that receive very little consideration. Yet, it's those interactions that define our character, that define who we are. Don't let inattention to the small stuff, the little things, alter the person that you want to be. 
Which brings us to my third, my favorite, and by the way, my final piece of advice, or should I say Winston Churchill's advice to never, never, never give up. Life is tough. No matter how hard you work, no matter how good your intentions, bad things will happen to you. But it's not what happens to you, it's how you let it affect you. Let's consider the workplace, although this applies to your personal life as well. In a class this size, it's virtually guaranteed that at least one of you, despite your best efforts, will find yourself jobless at some point. It's tough, it's embarrassing, it's disorienting, but you cannot stop. As winners, you must pick yourself up, work your way through the issue, and find that job. Now, the good news is, once you have worked your way through the, your struggle, you'll find that you're wiser, you're stronger, you're much more experienced, and you have a much better sense of what makes you happy. Life will knock you down, whether in the forestry, business, liberal arts, science, nursing, or math fields. True success comes to those who hold on long after others have let go. Never, never, never give up. So let's review. You arrive today with the exceptional and hard-earned knowledge, and I've given you some advice. My advice has begun, take stock of your particular strengths, define what they are, and become absolutely great at them. And as you move forward in life, pay very close attention to the little decisions. They make you who you are. And regardless of life's difficulties, never, never, never give up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been my honor to serve as a member of your Board of Regents for the last six years. I'm excited about your road ahead, and I wish you all the success in the world. This is my final official act at Stephen F. Austin State University. So from my family to you and to your families, I offer a heartfelt congratulations. Now, go take on the world and make yourself SFA and your families proud. Okay, class of 2013, are you ready for the big event? Dr. Patillo, let's do it. Mr. Dickerson, as you well know, it is a tradition at SFA for us to present each commencement speaker with a plaque expressing our appreciation to them for coming to be our commencement speaker. Today, on behalf of our graduating seniors in SFA, I would like to present such a plaque to you. And thank you for speaking to this one half of our graduating class, and also for coming and speaking to the other one half of our graduating class this morning at 9.30. I know you concluded by saying this was your last official duty at SFA, but I would like to add one more request on that list, and that was you spend the next few years continuing to work on Laurel and Avery so they will be lumberjacks in a few years. Thank you. <laughs> 